Why the fuck does this doctor look like Saw? Well, we got some miles behind us, and we got some more to steer. And it's mighty hard, cause there ain't no brothels in between there and here. Over rocky roads and rivers, trudge along this twisting land. Just two wandering souls and a big old dummy, riding on a magic hand. I'm making my way, I'm making my way. You guys aren't getting any of my good lighting for this because one, it's a fucking vlog, two, I'm lazy, and three, I'm tired. So there you go. <laughs> so if you've been watching any of my recent videos or latest videos, you're probably aware that I am a huge Critical Role fan, but a fairly new one. I only started watching them in January because um, if you're aware of Critical Role, they are a group of voice actors. Um, a group of nerdy ass voice actors who play Dungeons and Dragons. So there you go. Um, that's the that's the standard. Um, but Luna has been a critter for many years. And um, for those who don't know, um, their show The Legend of Vox Machina season two came out in January. And Luna was like, okay, so we're gonna watch season one. So you can watch season two with me because it's fucking good. And I'm gonna get you into Critical Role. And so we watched the show and I loved it. It's a great show. Uh, <laughs> and then she's like, well, okay. Then they announced that they were gonna do a Mighty Nine animated show. And she's like, okay, well now you gotta watch Mighty Nine. So I've been watching Mighty Nine. I'm in like the eighties right now and I love it. So um, that's the background. So now cut to a couple months ago. So probably around May-ish. Um, Critical Role announced that they were going to be attending both Portland, uh, Rose City Comic Con in Portland and New York Comic Con. Now this is a really big deal because they have not done any cons since pre-COVID times. So the fact that they were attending cons now, huge deal. Um, and I found that out at work and then I came home immediately and I was like, hey Luna, so you wanna go to Oregon? <laughs> Cause it looks like we're going to Portland. Because um, I took a trip to New York earlier this year. That sounds like bragging, but um, I was, I've was i already been to New York this year. And also New York Comic Con is expensive as fuck. Um, so we're like, yeah, let's, let's, let's go to Portland. Why not? It was literally the most spontaneous decision I've ever made in my life. Especially with huge financial repercussions. <laughs> um, but we booked the Airbnb, Airbnb that night. Um, we bought our badges like two days later and we messaged our friend V and was like, hey, you want to go to Oregon with us in, in September? And she was like, fuck yeah. So that just kind of started the ball rolling um, to get, get us to this point. Going into this con, obviously the big people that were like, oh my God, we're critical role. Um, but there were other voice actors and, and people who were like, oh, that's really cool. Um, Eric Vale was there, um, Yuki from Fruits Basket, um, Shigaraki from MHA, a bunch of other shit. If you don't know who Eric Vale is, then that's your fault. He's awesome. Um, like Ralph Macchio was there, Zoe Saldana was there, and Karen Gillan. They were expensive about the ass, and I didn't have time to get them anyway, so there's that. But a lot of really a big guest list, but it was very clear. It was very funny because the, the con was like promoting Zoe Saldana as the big, as like their VIP, like like that's, that's the big one. <laughs> and all the critters over here are just like, okay. But they obviously recognized that um, Critical Role was going to be a big crowd bringer for them because around July-ish, um, they, we're like, okay, we're gonna be uh, releasing the pre-purchase for autographs. Um, and this is the first time um, I've attended a con 
where you could um, purchase the autographs in advance. Um, Luna's never been to a con at all before this point. So we were just like, okay, this is, this is fine. And, and I was working a, a desk job at the time. So I'm like, it's okay. I'll just, it was, they, they went on sale at like 3 p.m. Central time. So I was like, okay, totally chill. I'm just gonna take, take like 10 minutes at my desk. It's gonna be perfectly fine. And I'll uh, get one autograph for a couple. We can get the photo op with all three of them. That'd be, that'd be great. In my head, I was like, don't wanna spend too much, but at the same time, it's critical role, money's no object. Um, so I sat down at my desk, um, fully prepared. And um, instead of describing it, I'm just gonna, you know, insert the TikTok dramatization here. For the crusty crab! So yeah, I was just at my desk, silently panicking, while I have a student working at the other desk, but um, so I was only able to get um, an autograph for Taliesin, one autograph for Marisha, and one autograph for Sam. Those were the only critical role things I was able to get. And the same with Luna. Um, I was really mad because I had Laura in my cart, Laura Bailey, and I had a group photo op in my cart. But what it would do is if you didn't check out in time and enough people had checked out with that thing, it was like, too bad, so sad, fuck you. And so by the time I went to check out, I was too slow and, um, that's all I could get away with. Uh, so it really was a war and, and so many of us walked out missing limbs. Um, but I was like, you know what? That's okay. I get to meet three of them. That's like awesome. So that part, I was like, I was like, it is what it is. Hopefully when we get there, we'll be able to buy them at the door. Then cut to early September when the Khan releases a statement where it's like, okay, there's a critical role panel that's gonna happen. We know you motherfuckers are crazy. So you're gonna have to reserve a spot for the panel online. And it's gonna be like a random queuing system. We'll hop in, um, cause there's only 2000 seats available. Uh, everyone's like, okay, okay, it's fine, it's fine. So me, V and Luna, I'll get on our respective computers. Um, I entered the queue way earlier than I meant to. I was just kind of like trying to get stuff ready. And it's like, boom, you're in the queue. And I'm like, didn't mean to, but okay, I'm here. Um, so the queue starts and V sends a message and it's like, fucking got in, hooray. And we're like, okay, okay, okay. And Luna's like, I got in 15 minutes in. And I'm like, okay, if, you, if this is the, the line of the queue, and like, this is the start. I had moved maybe this much. And then I got like here and it was like, 50% of the seats are still open. So you're good. And I'm like, but I'm not even 50% of the way there. Um, and I shit you not, this actually happened. I have photographic evidence. I was about here when they sent out the message being, sorry, all the seats are gone. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And I was salty about it for like the next day or so. Um, but eventually I was like, you know what? Maybe it was me being the Lulu, but I was like, you know what? It's fine. I haven't even watched campaign three. I'm not even done with campaign two. It, there's probably spoilers in it. I'll, I'll figure out something else to do. It's fine. It's fine. Me trying to cope. Um, and they did release um, standby tickets, which I also had no luck with. That was a lost cause. And they also were like, there was gonna be no non-standby line. So you couldn't even go up there to the panel room or be up in that area without like a QR code reservation for standby or an actual ticket. So it was like, if you didn't have either of those, too bad, so sad. And for that, like I, like I understand because when you have that big a massive fan base, and it was very clear that the con, they were expecting Critical Role to be big, but I don't think they were expecting it to be big as it was. But they were still, I feel like they were trying to take safety into account 
you know, like having so many people in a room and so many people lined up in the hallways and just like all that. So like, I get it, but still, you know. So here in Lil' Ole Missouri, if you're familiar with the geography of the United States, um, it's quite a bit of a drive. And um, yes, we did decide to drive instead of fly because um, none of us had ever been to the Pacific Northwest before. And we knew that that area was very beautiful and we're like, you know, just savor the drive. And you know, we figured we'd be buying a bunch of shit. We wouldn't be able to pack into a plane and deal with luggage and everything. So we just decided to drive. Day one, we're in the middle of Nebraska somewhere. Six hours down, six more to go uh, to Cheyenne for the first day. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And it was a beautiful drive as you probably saw in the montage. Um, I either put before this or I'm gonna put after this. I don't know what the format of this video is gonna look like, um, but you're gonna get a montage somewhere. Uh, but yeah, it was really pretty, obviously in Missouri, and went through little nothing Nebraska. And then when we actually got to like Wyoming and we started seeing mountains and stuff, we were like, fuck yeah, mountains, cause we're from the Midwest and we don't got mountains. Um, but it was, it was a very, very beautiful drive. And we got to our little Airbnb in Portland and it was tiny, but it was cute. It was a cute, nice little, little apartment in Portland. We each got our own beds, which was nice. Um, and you know what? We didn't spend a whole lot of time there to begin with. So it's not like we needed a bunch of space. Um, but it was, it was, it was a cute, cute little space. And I, and I took a video of it somewhere. Okay. Luna and V went out to go get coffee before the first day. So I thought I would give you the tour of our very small Airbnb. So not much of a tour, but here we go. You walk in and you got this really small entrance area. What's weird though is I'm standing right in front of the front door and bam, there's the bedroom. Really nice little bedroom. Luna's been sleeping here. And then you come down, we got a little kitchenette, pretty much just that. And then we got the bathroom. Hi, I'm charging my phone right now. And then we go down to the living room area where we got a pull out couch and we got a futon. And it's just a general mess right now. But yeah, I am ripping Camp Papua today. I'm doing a very loose Annabeth cosplay because I just thought, you know, why not? Um, but yeah, um, today's for day of the con. Um, stuff doesn't really start till one o'clock, but we're going to try to get there early so we can get V's badge because she can get it ma mailed to her. Um, it's kind of going to be more chill today. Critical Role stuff doesn't start till tomorrow. They don't even get here till tomorrow. So today is just going to be kind of be the chill day to look at everything. We got a few signings we're going to, a few panels we're interested in. But other than that, it's just going to be kind of getting the lay of the land. Probably spending a lot of money at Artist Alley in the um, exhibit hall, but that's fine. That's what cons are for, is spending all your fucking money. So Friday, first day of the con, um, we get there and it's a, uh, the Oregon Convention Center in Portland is a beautiful convention center. It's big as fuck and it's hard to find stuff, but it's, it's a beautiful convention center in a beautiful part of Portland. Um, but um, we get there, we kind of try to find our bearings and everything. We get into the Artist Alley dealer's room autograph area in the exhibit halls and it is massive. This is definitely the biggest con that I've been to. The biggest one besides this one would probably be Anime Midwest in Chicago. But even then, I like, from what I remember, it had nothing compared to, to this. Like, ginormous artist alley. I got like a whole stack here of, of business cards that I bought from, or that I got from all the artists there. Um, but... So it's a big room, beautiful room. Um, we looked around for a little bit and that day um, we decided that we weren't gonna be like big. Like it was that Friday was the one day where it's not the big cosplay day. So like I'd, I had a Kemp Half-Blood shirt from when I was in like middle school and I had a Yankees cap. So I like did like a very loose Annabeth from Percy Jackson. Um, Luna did Grace from Stray Gods, which um, I'll get to Stray Gods in a bit. Um, but, and then um, V did uh, 
Kuropi, and it was really cute. Um, but that day, um, the only things we had a when we looked at the schedule, we we kind of like it's like oh I'd be interested in this, I'd be interested in this. Um, so we had a couple things on the docket for that day. My first thing was um, I had an autograph with Eric Vale, and he was obviously super nice. Um, if you follow him on Twitter, he says the realest shit, and he is very funny and just very a very um, what's the word I'm looking for eloquent man. He's very he's you talk to him and like you immediately feel smarter. Um, <laughs> he, he's just he's just a like a really nice person to have conversation with. And um, I was able to get a couple things signed from him. Little first thingy here is, um, you'll recognize I have my My Hero Academia Ultra Analysis Guide. And if you saw our vlog from Missouri Comic Con back in February, you know that I got um, Ian Sinclair and Chris Wenkamp, who are Shoji and Aizawa respectively to sign this. And I've got him for Eric Vale for Shigaraki. It's really hard to tell because he wrote in black, but he just wrote decay in a really like scratchy um, handwriting. So there's that. I've got three in the book now. Boy. Uh, <laughs> um, and I'd like to get as many of my hero people in there as possible. That'd be really cool. And then also, if you remember from the last con video we did, I have these beautiful um, Fruits Basket prints um that are from one of the endings of the fruits basket reboot that i would love to get all the main cast to sign and in february i was able to get ian sinclair um for kurano um and so eric vale plays yuki so i was finally able to get yuki um and he wrote um stupid cat i don't know if it's going to reverse us or not but he wrote stupid cat um so that was already two on my docket um but when we got there on friday because i had brought my toru one for laura bailey because we'd gone in expecting like oh they'll probably do walk-ups because you know they were doing walk-ups for everybody else you didn't need to have a pre-purchase but the second we walk into the autograph room in a big sign it says critical role autographs pre-purchase only and I talked to staff members like so we can't just walk up and they're like no um and and like you get like everyone who like came in expecting that because it seemed like a lot of people did we were like oh <laughs> um but i'd already kind of like been preparing myself for that i wasn't treating it like a guarantee but we were all like oh that's fun um but okay but um after that um eric vale had a panel um that was that was very fun a lot of really good questions were asked and it was it was very personal panel and it, it like it was great and one thing that i really liked about this con was they made it explicit they reminded everybody um frequently um that they were going to honor the the strike of the writers guild of america and sag aftra which i've mentioned again multiple times um so they were very politely asking all of the guests to refrain from asking questions or talking about anything that fell um, under those strike rules, um, and everyone followed it very well. But I like I have a I had a great respect for the con for for pointing that out. They're like, like before every panel, like at the beginning of every day, you there were signs everywhere being like, please don't ask about this, please don't ask about that. It it violates the strike. We support the strike. And it was, that was really great. And I really appreciated that. Um, but yeah, the Eric Vale panel was great. Um, and big surprise, it was the only panel I went to. And that is another running joke is that I only ever go to like one or two panels when I like, I'm like, oh, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. I only go to like two. And then I spend the rest of the time in Artist Alley or autographs or something else. Um, but yeah, that part was great. And so another funny story. When I was <laughs> pre-purchasing all my autographs and stuff and um, I was doing all the Critical Role ones and I saw that everything was quickly selling out and I started to panic because um, I thought it was going to be the same with like every other um, guest of the con. So I was like, oh, I need I need Eric Vale for like two things. And so like I clicked Eric Vale for twice and I went to the cart and I wasn't paying attention. Um, so instead, initially, instead of buying autographs, it's instead said audio or video recording, you know, when you 
ask a voice actor to record something for you for like a voicemail or, or some shit like that. That's what I had bought instead. Um, and the, the company who, who um, took care of all the autographs and photos were like, oh, you can't refund them. Um, you could transfer them, but you can't refund them. And I'm like, okay. So I went and actually got, bought the two autographs for Eric Vale, but then I was like, okay, well, I have two autographs from him. And I have two recordings from him. This guy's gonna think I'm like a fucking like crazy person or like a weird fan or something. And what do what, what do I do? Um, but thankfully, um, uh, time went on, and me and Luna um, played Stray Gods, um, which I mentioned earlier. And if you don't know what Stray Gods is, it's awesome. Go play it. It is this um, musical role playing game that um, Laura Bailey's in, Troy Baker's in, Ashley Johnson's in. Um, it's all about Greek gods and like the modern day. Um, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure. But then um, two actors who are also in it are uh, Felicia Day and um, Anjali Bamani, who were two guests um, also attending the con. And they're also um, big uh, critical role people. Um, Anjali has guest starred on Critical Role a couple times. Felicia Day is like partially the reason Critical Role even exists. Um, so they were coming, so I'm like, okay, transfer them. And so on Friday, I was able to um, meet with the two of them. And Felicia was super sweet. Um, I feel really bad because um, I don't know like any of her other work. She was in Supernatural. I didn't watch Supernatural. And I told her that and I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> I haven't seen any of your other stuff, but I love Stray Gods. And she was really excited about that because it is a relatively new game. And she wasn't, it looked like she wasn't really expecting a Stray Gods person to come up. And I'm like, I've played it like three times, yo. And she's like, oh my God, she plays Athena um, in in the game. And so she was like, oh my gosh, that, 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 that means so much to me. And so I just had her sign my badge because I didn't want to like waste her um, um, headshots that she had on the table, which I think like, I get why, but I also think it's just weird to have a signed headshot or something, unless like they're like, ultra like unless it's Adele <laughs> unless it's Adele like or I don't know what's another good example Judy Garland I don't know I know she's dead but unless it's like that person I think it's weird to have a headshot like signed I don't know it's weird but anyway I had her sign my badge and that was cool and then I went to Anjali and I she is such a sweet human being I had the best time at Anjali's booth um, what sets her apart is instead of sitting behind the, the desk or the table, she would come to the front and she would actually speak to you like one-on-one. -on -one. And she was like, she was spending so much time with like every individual person. She was so, so sweet. And I told her the same thing I told Felicia, like, I love Stray Gods. I played it multiple times and she played as Medusa in the game. Um, and they both have their own songs and they're, they slap. Um, and uh but i had just a really nice interaction with her she was so personal and i was able to get um a print from exandria unlimited from critical role signed by her which i feel really bad because i haven't watched that yet so i don't even know what her character is but um i'm like i got it transferred i need to have something signed um and she has critical role stuff so i was like sure 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 so when i eventually watch exandria unlimited I'll know what I'll know what that character is, but it's a beautiful print, and I'll I'll show it later when I show my haul. But um, yeah, so just like overall, just like a great person to interact with. She was awesome. I should not have been left alone to my own devices. <laughs> I've bought so much. I'm lost. V is coming to find me because. I got wrapped up in the artist alley. I did win that um, scavenger hunt stamp thing they had going for critters. And I got little stickers. I haven't actually looked at what I got, but it's like looks like some stickers and a little print. It's cute. And I've already spent a lot of money. Fade cut to Saturday, which is the the big one, the big day. Not just because it's Saturday and every Saturday at a con is the big day, but because it's Critical Role Day. This is the day that the panel is, like, first thing in the morning. They're big se autograph sessions today. And everybody is 
fucking ready. <laughs> like everyone at the con. Um, um, uh, it was really cute. Um, Luna went and cosplayed as Caleb, Liam's character from Mighty Nine, but it was like a female version. She was Kayla instead of Caleb. And then I um, cosplayed as Beth, um, Sam's character. Um, and I was very proud of my, it's probably the most complicated cosplay I've, I've ever done. Um, but I was very proud of it and we all looked cute. I forget what V was cosplay as. I'm sorry, V. Um, <laughs> but we were ready. Um, their panel started at 1015, but the convention center opened at eight. Um, so we're like, okay, we gotta, we gotta go. So we woke up at like 530 in the morning. Um, to get all our cosplay stuff ready. We got over to the convention center. We very clearly were not the first ones. It was a very long line. Um, but there were a lot of really cool Critical Role cosplays in there. Um, uh, and we were able to, they actually, we got there and then they started letting everyone in very, very quickly. Um, but very soon after we got there, we ran into a problem. So we've run into a crisis and that is that V has lost her badge, which has her reservation for the Critical Role panel on it. And we think it's in the Uber, or it could be out on the street. We do not know, but I am currently on watching Bag Duty. So we'll see how that goes. So, update, uh, badge was found and lost and found. Someone came through, which is great. They got into the panel. I'm waiting for them now. Um, my fun little vial of acid dropped off my belt and splattered everywhere and I, it was very embarrassing. Um, and I've also bought a lot of things in Artist Alley. Again. And I'm debating whether or not, <laughs> since the Critical Role panel is about to get out, uh, if I should just jump in a line now or wait, I don't know. And there's Talison, Ashley, there's already people in Ashley's line. Sam, Liam, Marisha, Laura, Travis, Matt. So far, Ashley's the only one that actually has people in her line. I don't know if that's... It's, it's two hours until they're... Um, two hours until they're signing. There's more people over by their photo ops because photo ops is first, but we'll see. So after crisis was averted um, <laughs> and I spent more money, um, I went ahead and decided, I'm like, you know what? I don't have, I don't, there's not a panel I want to go to. I need to stop spending money at Artist Alley. I need to be at least in front of one of these lines so I actually can get the ones I bought ahead of time. Um, so I wait out and I'm like, okay, between the three of them, the one that's probably going to fill up the fastest is Taliesin's. Just because Taliesin is Taliesin and Percy is everyone's favorite motherfucker. So, <laughs> um, so me and Luna, once she got out of uh, the panel, um, V didn't get any autographs, unfortunately. Um, but um, Luna came out of the panel and Luna only had Taliesin on Saturday. She had Marisha and Sam scheduled for their Sunday um session and uh but i had all three of them for saturday so i was like okay i need to get all three of them in today so we were at the front of talison's line two hours before they started so it is currently like 12 50 and luna what time is the autographs 2 30 2 30 yes <laughs> you know what it, it was it was it was boring two hours but then as the line started to fill up with more people um, we started talking with other fans and there was one couple in particular, I forget who the husband was dressed as, um, it wasn't Critical Role that I'm aware of, but the, the wife, she was dressed up as a, as a dice gremlin, like full body paint and everything. She had like dice woven into her hair. I should have taken a picture with her, but, uh, it was, uh, she, beautiful cosplay and just talking with people in the line was super fun and, uh, just like kind of the, the camaraderie being like, yep, we're all here. <laughs> um, but then after after two hours of waiting, um, they all came out, of, they, it was very theatrical. They're, it, they definitely planned this, but they're like, okay. They all like waited behind the curtains and then they all like came through the curtains like very theatrically and everyone cheered and it was very fun. Um, 
but um, I went up to Towson and um, he was super sweet. Um, I had bought a um, Vox Machina print that um, I'll show later, but this great Vox Machina print from um, a UK artist called Alice Illustrate. I'll put her link in the description. It's a very cute print. And he immediately was like, uh, I love artists. <laughs> and I'm like, yes. And I, I, I told him I was a new critter and that um, one thing I love about Towson is that um, his, his characters are so unique from one another and they all carry a very unique joy, like a unique and weird joy to them. Like they, they carry such a happiness within them, but it's a different vibe like between Percy and Molly and Caduceus and I haven't watched Campaign 3. I forget what his Campaign 3 character's name is, but it's fine. Um, and I told him that and he's like, oh, it, it only gets worse. So there you go. Um, um, but he, he was super sweet. And um, then I hopped into Sam's line and obviously I was at the very back, but again, still talking to people. It was really, really sweet. Um, and eventually I get to the front of Sam's line. And it was so nice because his, his first comment was, he's like, I love your cosplay, referencing my Veth cosplay. And I, I, was, I was very excited to go meet him in the Veth cosplay. And um, I was excited because I, mine was a little more, I don't wanna say unique, that makes me sound fucking, <laughs> but it was, so um, I met a lot of other Veths at the, at the con and they were all beautiful cosplays. Um, but it's all like um, vet in the campaign proper. And I decided one, because it was a slightly easier cosplay and two, to be a little different. I decided to be camp counselor Beth from Mighty Nine Reunited, which again, I have not watched yet, <laughs> but um, it was very cute with the shorts and, and, and everything. Um, but um, he, he, he it, I, it, it warmed my heart. He literally said he liked my cosplay like three times. And I was like, thank you. Um, but he, he was also very, very sweet as you would expect to be. And then I hopped into Marisha's line and, um, same thing. She was very, very sweet. Um, I asked her if her hand was hurting yet. She's like, no, I, she's like, I think, I think my mind's going to go before my hand goes. Um, but she also complimented my cosplay. That's the one thing I could say. They all complimented me on my cosplay. Uh, <laughs> and by the time I got out of Marisha's, how the schedule was set up for um, their autographs, it was they signed for two hours, they were scheduled a 30 minute break and then they were coming back for two hours. And then we got to a certain point and we realized they're not taking their break. We got to, to the 2.30 mark and they were all still there and still going strong and we're like, okay. And um, so by the time I got out of Marisha's, it was like, Probably, it's probably around between three and 3.30, I wanna say. So I've been waiting in line for about three hours at this point. Um, I had not drank any, I barely drank any water because I'm like, I can't go to the bathroom in the middle of all this or I won't have time. And I, I didn't eat anything because waiting in line for any of their food vendors took forever. And I was a dumbass who didn't pack any snacks because the day before I'd been like, oh, they have restaurants here. I don't need to pack snacks. Um, but anyway, going three hours, I get out of the line and I hear um, something from, from staff members and, and information is flowing through the line that apparently, um, so when autographs went on sale, the pre-sale, people with fast passes and VIP passes and all that stuff, they got into autographs about 30 minutes before everyone else could. And all the fast pass people had sold out Matt Mercer before general admission could even get in. So no one from general admission could even get an autograph from Matt Mercer. But because of that, um, all the fast pass people got through his line very quickly. And so the staff was like, okay, we can let walk-ups in if you have cash. And I have never sprinted to an ATM so quickly in my life. And I was hearing from other staff members too, and lines have been going through that, uh, uh, rumors have been going through that apparently they, Matt had said, and all the other CR cast members had said like, 
if we have time, we will accept walk-ups. Like we want, we want to see people. We like, we don't want to just leave people hanging. And so everyone was kind of like on their seats, like, like the Connors were sleeping, like no, and Critical Role was like, yes. Um, but anyway, rushed to the ATM. I pulled out money for everyone I would have had left, which would have been Matt, Laura, Travis, Ashley, and Liam. And I rushed to Matt's line and, they're, and I'm like, I have cash. And they're like, there you go. And I was like, is this happening? Am I gonna meet the, the Matt Mercer? I get to the front of his line by like six-ish, six, six fifteen-ish. Autographs end at six thirty, and I walk up to him, and again, as one would imagine, the sweetest human being. Like, if you needed confirmation of that, he is the sweetest person. He it, like immediately like shook my hand. He asked me what my name was, and like. Just like a very like like Anjali, it was it, like you could just feel the vibes, like a very very personal. And I I told him that I was new and that like I appreciated his other voice work because if for those who don't know, he's also like Levi in Attack on Titan and like other shit I can't think of at the moment. But I I told him I'm like I appreciate your work and and thank you for taking your time and thank all of you for taking your time for being with us and for not taking your break and just like wanting to see it. He's like, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. And just like, like how their work just always brings such joy to so many people. And like, like it was a, it was a very nice conversation for both of us, I feel. And the cherry on the top was as I was leaving, he, he um, we, I, was, I was like, have a good night, have a good night. And he's like, yes, yes, um, have a good night, love. And I was like, like trying not to spontaneously combust because <laughs> um, I'm like, I didn't think I was going to actually meet you. So um, because he'd actually, when I was sitting in um, Talison's line earlier that day, um, Anjali's booth is right next to Talison. So, and Matt like snuck up behind her, like to say hi while we were in line. And me and Luna had been joking. We're like, that's, that's as close as we're going to get to Matt Mercer, 10 feet. And then I actually got to meet him and shake his hand. So that was like wild into me. So I get out of his line, it's like 625. And I like look at the other lines. It looks like they're, they're still kind of letting people in. I look over to Liam's line and Liam has like three people in his line. I walk up to the staff member like immediately. And I'm like, are you still accepting people with cash? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> and I just, I, I like, I, I'm like, thank you. And I like walk past. Um, Cause Liam is my boy and his characters are my children and, I, and, and my men. <laughs> Um, and I get up there and I like this, I could tell this poor man was so tired. I got, I gotta get the sun out. So I get up to Liam and he's very nice. He's, he's like, how you doing? Like, how's your day been? But I could immediately tell upon like being face to face with him. He was tired. And like, just, I, I don't know if it's like, just because his energy was a bit lower than I was expecting or like, I don't know, I don't know what it was, but I could just tell he was tired, which understandably they had all been signing for four hours straight with no break. And like some people would think like, oh, that's, that's normal for them. They play four hour sessions and they get a 10 minute break, like for those and like that's fine but it's like it's such a different vibe like like when they're when they're doing their sessions they're in a familiar environment yes they're performing for cameras kind of but like for the most part they're in a table surrounded by their friends and in a game they don't have to be on a hundred percent of the time they can like they're gonna be a scene happening between two other people and you get a break for like five minutes or something where you don't have to talk but like at the con it's like you're not in a familiar place. You're probably in a very uncomfortable chair. Your hand's probably cramping from riding for four hours and you're interacting with fans and they're very nice interactions, but they're still strangers. And like, it's, it's just like such a different energy that I'm sure like saps stuff out of you. And they did a, an hour long panel 
at 10 a.m., which they were probably up very early for. And then they did like two hour long photo ops before they even went to autographs. So they had been going for like eight, nine hours straight. And I could just tell like it was like starting to hit him a little bit. And then I felt like he did nothing to imply this at all, but I could just, I could like tell he was probably like, He's like, okay, thank God, it's like almost over and I can rest. He didn't give off that vibe at all, but I could just, I, I know that's probably what he was thinking because that's what I'd be thinking. I'm like, wow, love meeting all these fans. I want to sleep for a thousand years. Um, and then I felt really bad. <laughs> and I'm, I was, so I like, it was, it was, it was a more rushed interaction than I would have liked. But um, I was like, I was like, okay, thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> um, and, but so I that I but I was elated after that. I was like I was like I got Matt and I got Liam. I'm like miracle. Don't know how that happened. So going into Sunday, I was bringing this revitalized hope within me that maybe if I could swing that shit on Saturday, I could somehow swing that shit on Sunday. So it is much slower today. Luna is currently waiting in line for her scheduled critical role autographs, which start in about 20 minutes officially. I'm hoping that they'll do what they did yesterday and when it gets nearer to the end, they'll let people who didn't pre-purchase in. So, cause I still need Ashley, Laura and Travis. So it's hoping. So I picked up my, my little Toru card cause I'm like, Laura was my priority because I wanted her for Fruits Basket too. So I'm like, okay, my big priority today is Laura. And if I can get Travis and Ashley, even better. Um, so um, we get there and then Luna had her scheduled autographs with Marisha and Sam that day. So I dropped Luna off for that, walked around Artist Alley, again, spent more money. Um, but then... Um, it gets within that hour. On Sunday, they only had a two hour block of signing and that was it. Um, so um, it's about an hour and then I walk over and I kind of like, there's like overflow lines for the autographs. Um, so I wait there and they're like, okay, go on and go in. If you have cash for Laura, you're all good. And I'm like, <laughs> just like a victorious choir playing in my head um and on Sunday um Luna and I again were kind of doing like a couple cosplay it was a very modern very loose um Vex and Vax um we each had a t-shirt that said I'm with Vex or I'm with Vax and we did our hair like them and everything so I was Vex um which was very fitting um and again, waiting in line, I got to speak with some other fans, like some really sweet people. Um, and then I got up to Laura Bailey, the queen. Um, and again, super, super sweet. Um, I told her about how Fruits Basket is my favorite anime, borderline just favorite show in general, which all of you know that by now. Um, and we talked about how amazing of a of a character that Toru is and and you can just you can just tell she genuinely loves Toru so much and just like and I and I told her and I'm like how she brings that heart to to Toru like 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 she like Toru is already such a beautiful character but Laura just adds like that much and I told her as such and she was like thank you very much and then just the other stuff telling her I'm a new critter and all this other stuff she was super super sweet and then um by the time i got done with her travis's line which travis was obviously right next to her travis was getting a little short so me and this um um other woman i'd been waiting in line for laura with and i'm like well let's see if we can let's see if we can work our way into travis's line so we get into his overflow and it's getting dangerously close to um two o'clock the cutoff time and um we're waiting and the staff member comes up to us after seemingly talking with somebody else. And uh, he's like, okay, I have been authorized. I've been given authorization. I can let 20 more people in. 
and I was like seventh or eighth in line. And like, I look at this other woman and she looks at me and we're like, let's fucking go. <laughs> um, but we get into line. They actually, um, and then it turns out they all did take a break for this day because it was very clear like they were gonna go longer than the two hours and they decided to actually take the 30 minute break. They should have taken on Saturday because they probably all discovered, wow, we were all pretty dead after that, weren't we? Um, so they took their break and um, I'd actually, before this point, I'd been hearing a staff member talking to some other staff about how they wanted to meet everybody so badly that they had all been talking about working through their meals, working through their breaks. And they, like, all the staff had to be like, please don't do that. Um, <laughs> but so that's just the vibe that was coming in. They were all so excited to meet fans as we were as excited to meet them after so long of not having them at cons. But anyway, I get up to Travis and, and kind of the same vibe as Matt. He, he shook my hand. He's like, well, what up? How are you doing? And I'm like, I'm good. Um, and I, I told him, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm like a baby critter. I started watching you guys in January and he's like, whoa, you are a baby. Wow. Um, and, and then I was like, oh, but my first anime was the original Fullman Alchemist. And then he was like, oh, so you've been around a while then. <laughs> um, and then he said something, he was like, he was like, well, maybe by the time you are done or by the time you're done, you know? The animated Mighty Nine will probably be out by then. And I was like, I'm like, are you giving me a timeline, Travis? <laughs> how, how soon are we getting it? How, how soon are we getting animated Mighty Nine? Tell me, Travis. Um, but again, very sweet interaction. And then I get out. Ashley's line is still at the wazoo, but I'm like, I'll try it. I walk up to a staff member and I'm like, are, 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 are you still letting people into Ashley? And they're like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, valid. Um, cause Ashley had always had like a long line the entire time cause she's Ashley fucking Johnson. I mean, can you blame people? Um, so that was pretty much the, the end of the day. Luna and V had been done for a while and they, they were like, we're not even gonna attempt any of that. <laughs> um, so after that we were kind of just done. Not only did I get... Ba -da -da -da. My beautiful Laura Bailey signed Toru card and she drew a little rice ball with a plum in its back. Ah, oh, so cute. But I now also have probably what is now one of my most prized possessions. <laughs> so yeah, I got Talison, Marisha, Liam, Laura, Travis, Sam, and Matt. I wasn't able to get little Pikey because she had a line out the fucking door which is fine I'll just hopefully get to meet her someday and, and finish finish the job but yeah like I said this beautiful print this really really cute print is still in the plastic because I do not want anything to happen to this but this beautiful print is um done by Alice Illustrates I'll put her link somewhere she's amazing she came through for me because originally she didn't have prints this big but then I told her and I'm like I'm meeting CR do you have anything bigger than this she's like I will make something bigger for you than for you than I'll make something bigger <laughs> it's fine so huge thanks to her. She's awesome. And she's got other cute art that isn't just Critical Role. Um, but yeah, so there's that. There's nothing really much to say about the drive back um, other than we had to make it two days instead of three because V had to get back to work early. Um, but, and also same, same scenery and everything. Um, so I'm just gonna get into showing my haul, y'all, because I bought some pretty cool shit. So I feel really bad because I got so many business cards um, and yet I didn't keep track of what artist was which <laughs> for a lot of these art. So I tried to match up some the best I can and then others I just cannot remember, um, which sucks. Um, but hopefully I can find them. But anyway, we'll start off with the really cute keychains I got, um, starting with these. I do know the artist for these. This is a beautiful, I like walked past these like five times and then eventually was like, okay, so I got to get them. It's a Molly and a Caduceus because I love them. And um, these are by Erin Yi Art. There is her business card and her info. Again, I really hope that um, flips over. If not, I will put their link somewhere in the description. Um, I got 
another keychain. This is a Yasha. I feel really good because I, I got her and the artist was like, it's like, no one's gotten her today. You're the first person to get Yasha. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna give Yasha some love. There she is, isn't she? She's so cute. She's so adorable. And then I got another three keychains. Um, I do know the artist for this one too. This is from an artist called the Starfish Face. There is her stuff again. And I got a really cute knot one. These ones are double-sided, so there's something different on each side. So we got a knot. She's got stuff in her little bag. <laughs> Cutie. And then we got the Jester. Such a cute little girl. We love Jessie. And then of course I had to get my boy Vax. <laughs> my boy. <laughs> so those are all the keychains I got. And then we have these two beautiful metal bookmarks from Brandy York. Um, it's hard to see with the reflections, <laughs> but we got a beautiful one of, from uh, Keyleth. And then we got another beautiful one of Vax and the Matron, which I was really happy because she said they hadn't packed enough inventory. So this was the last one they had for the con. Um, so it's a beautiful, beautiful art. And again, here, her name is Brandy York. There is her card, with all her socials and stuff. So these were really cool. Don't know what I'm gonna use them for yet, but hopefully I will find very good books for them. Of course, I had to get a new set of dice. Um, if you're a frequent of cons, you probably are familiar with Misty Mountain Gaming. I feel like they have a, a table at just about any rather good con. But since I just recently started playing D&D, this is only my second set of dice. But they are these beautiful, um, they're kind of greenish. Let's see if we can focus here. Yeah, they're kind of greenish with like a little pink flowers in them. Very, very earthy, very druidy. Um, which is funny because I'm playing a paladin, but it's like a nature paladin, so it's fine. Um, so finally got my second set of dice, first set of dice I bought myself. So there we, there we, there we go. Um, and then had to get some, had to get the first non D and D. Well, besides the free specific things, but I already had those. But the first non D and D thing I got, I got, I had to get a parchment of chaotic King Bill Cipher. Um, cause I don't have anything, um, Gravity Falls related. Um, so I can finally hang this up somewhere because Gravity Falls is an amazing show. If you haven't watched it, go watch Gravity Falls. Um, I say that, um, please support the union and the after strike. Um, <laughs> as I say that, uh, yeah. So now let's get to the shit ton of prints I bought. <laughs> Okay, I'll go ahead and start with the, the critical role prints I got. Um, and I do, I am keeping all these in the plastic until I find um, frames for them because they are very nice art and I don't want anything to happen to them. Um, we'll go ahead and start with the, the print I got from Anjali that I had her sign. This is from Exandria Unlimited. Um, and then she signed it down here with the quote, uh, stay in the light. Um, can't wait to watch Exandria Unlimited. So I see the context of that quote, but it sounded really cool. So I was like, yeah, let's go with that. Um, but there's that print. I'm sure she commissioned that from an amazing artist, which I knew who they were. But um, first off, um, I got this beautiful Mighty Nine print, this group Mighty Nine print that includes Essek. Um, um, I do know this artist's name is Cleo. I don't know what their official handle is, but uh, Luna follows them on Twitter, is a big fan of them. They had beautiful art. They also had a Vox Machina print, um, very similar format to this, that Luna bought that one and got that signed by um, the cast. And they had a, she had a, a, a Bell's Hells one as well. Um, and just overall very beautiful art at that, um, at that stall. Um, second big print I got, I saw it in gas when I had to get it, but it's um, the Mighty Nine um, under um, their dome. And you can see a bunch of um, their memories playing in the Dome and Liam and tiny hut. Um, it's very hard to see. At first I was like, where's Bo? It, it's really hard to see her because she's laying down. I don't even know if you can see her in the camera, but I remember looking up at her in when it was, when this was hanging up above the table and I'm like, where's Bo in this picture? <laughs> I cannot see her. But yeah, this was a beautiful print. So I went ahead and got that. And then 
Here's a three mini prints, but they're gold foil prints. I got three of them. We got one of Molly. Again, I cannot remember the name of this artist, unfortunately, but there's Molly. And then I got a Caduceus. If you can't tell, those two are my boys. Um, and then I got a Caleb because he's also my boy. Oh, here it is. Um, it's on the back of the thing. Um, these are by uh, Demartini Designs. And here's their card right here I prepared. Um, so there's that information, Demartini Designs. Um, absolutely beautiful gold foil prints. These are, I'm definitely getting these um, framed together. Hopefully I can find like a, a single frame that makes these look very, very, very nice. Um, but those are all the critical roll ones I got. Of course, I had to buy something else that was Fruits Basket. This is very pretty to me. It's a nice silhouette of Toru with the boys. Um, need to figure out. I have no wall space. I don't know why I bought all these, but I will find a place for them. I will. Um, and then this next piece, I gasped because I never see erased art anywhere. If you know me, you know I loved the anime Erased. It's such a good story. Um, and I never see any artists anywhere do art for it. So the way I gasped when I saw this and I had to buy it, um, it was very, very beautiful. Um, there was another artist. Um, I also never see really good um, Barbie movie art. Um, but um, there was an artist who was selling little squares um, of art from each movie. So I bought the three from my childhood. So we got um, a beautiful one for Princess and the Pauper. Um, we got one from The Nutcracker and then from Rapunzel as well. Um, so, so glad I got those. Can't wait to put those up. Um, also, I realized I don't have a lot of Disney prints, um, which sucks. So there was this beautiful Enchanted one. Um, my girl Giselle, one of my favorite live action movies of all time. Um, and then two more, two more, I promise. Um, another one I don't, I didn't have any art for was The Promised Neverland. Um, this, um, this and The Enchanted one were done by the same artist. And again, I wish I could remember who it was. Um, but really great. Um, Promised Neverland was the first manga series I read all the way through so I had to get art for it and then of course I had to get a spy family print there were a lot of really good spy family prints there was another one I was eyeing and then I couldn't um find them again uh, but this was done by uh Jerry Draws one sec their card is in here if I can get it out and promote them for you um so yeah um Gary Draws I love the the boxed just like, it's such a, he had such a lively art style. I, I really appreciate all of his art um, at his booth is really great, but yeah, Gary draws. And then there is all his info for that. Um, so yeah, um, that's pretty much all I have, except the gifts I bought. And I don't want to show off the gifts so that people don't see what I got them. But that's everything I got for myself. So yeah, this trip was very enjoyable and just like an experience of a lifetime not just not just the con but also just traveling through beautiful scenery and i think i think a big part of what i enjoyed about this trip the most was just meeting people like not even just um in the con though i met a lot of fellow critters fellow anime fans and and talked at length with a lot of them like we would recognize each other over the days and be like Hey, how's it going? Did you get that autograph you wanted? Oh, did you buy that print? Oh my God. Um, but just, um, we met a lot of really good people on the road. Um, we stopped in um, Boise on the way um, one night and we ate at Cracker Barrel for dinner and uh, the cashier at Cracker Barrel, when we told her we were going to Portland, she's like, there's a great national park about 30 minutes outside of Portland and with beautiful waterfalls. If you have time, you should stop and see them. And we're like, oh, that's cool as fuck, sure. And we did, and it was a beautiful waterfall. And we got some good pictures, good videos, and it was just so sweet. And then there's this very small pit stop in Wyoming called Little America. And originally when we were driving up, we were like, oh, it's probably just like, you know, one of those like really cheesy, like 
places that tries to be like a big tourist spot but really isn't but it was a good ass rest stop like like full-on restaurant the, the, the convenience store was great like it was it was a very good rest stop and we i on the way back it was like 10 p.m and we still had a long way to go on the way back and i met this lady and we got to talking because she saw my i was wearing our college shirt and she got to talking to me and i told her i was a theater major and we started talking about theater and like also she's just generally such a nice person and like she gave me i don't have it but she gave me um this little um fastener that you can like hook onto your purse but she started she was like telling me a metaphor about um because she's like have you ever played peter pan or you ever wanted to play peter pan and i'm like and i'm like i wouldn't be opposed to it and she's like well this is the first step to flying and um and like she started telling me the story and something and i'm not entirely sure what the metaphor she was getting at she's very clearly a mom trying to give me give me a metaphor i think it was kind of like a thing of like oh it's something so small can be the the first step to you flying and going off i think that's the metaphor she was going for that's what i got out of it um but just generally sweet like genuinely great people we met on this trip on the way being there on the way back and just you know lately life has been very chaotic and kind of in parts not great so this trip has given gave me something to look forward to and i was not disappointed um, by any stretch of the imagination, and um, I bet Luna would say the same thing. Um, but just overall, a great trip and a lot of fun. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed our little adventure, uh, <laughs> and uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and that's pretty much it. Can you tell I don't put as much effort into vlogs, because they're vlogs. Um, but yeah, have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay safe, happy, and healthy. Um, check out our other videos if you haven't. Um, and yeah, goodbye.